Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Carlijn, but my friends call me Car. I love to travel and want to share my trips and adventures with you all on this vlog. We're gonna take the bullet train for the first time, which is exciting. And we're gonna meet our friend Nomas, who we haven't seen in 10 years. So I'm like really excited about that. Um, so we're just gonna have a chill breakfast today and then head off to the station and head to Nagano and then we're gonna do an amazing five-day road trip and we're gonna go all over. So I am checking out the newspaper stand. And look what you find in the Asahi Weekly. The bilingual paper for English learners. And so they have the English side and then the Japanese side. We just had our last, last 7-Eleven smoothie in Tokyo. Go back to the hotel, grab our put it in a taxi, a massive vat, like a, a truck, it in a taxi. yeet it in a taxi. And then we're gonna go to the train station. This is our departure from Tokyo and what a ride it has been. It was really a magical week to say the least. Shout out to the hotel and its wonderful staff. They really made our stay in Tokyo unforgettable. And now off to the train station to catch the bullet train to Nagano. Kara's getting the tickets for the train and upgraded us to Grand Class. Thanks sis and bye Tokyo, we loved you. We made our way to the platform, which was quite a pickle with all the luggages, but made it just in time. And as it is for many people, taking the bullet train was a definite must during our time in Japan, so we definitely didn't want to miss out. And a few facts about the Shinkansen that I didn't know about. This high-speed train is known for its speed and punctuality. It travels at a whopping 320 km per hour and connects many cities in Japan, the most popular route being Tokyo, Nagoya, Kyoto and Osaka. It is therefore the number one choice of transportation for most people in Japan and it is also the safest. In the 57 years of its existence, the Shinkansen has never had a derailment or collision. Honestly, one of the nicest trains I've ever been in. I mean, they don't have trains like this in Europe. Um, the seat is massive and yeah, it feels, like we're, it feels like we're floating, to be honest. That's how smooth this train is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, arigatou <laughs> <That means that>. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to plan things and especially. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline fell out of the Shinkansen. <laughs> Thank you, fast train. Bye bye. Bye, Shinkansen. Waterless, drinkless, and foodless train. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> Is that? Oh my god, there's that! No mess! Oh my god! <laughs> so we are now in Karua Zawa. There is a memorabilia. Look at that. 98 Olympics. Let me just catch up with my group. Here we are in the step wagon. We've put all of our suitcases in. And no one's giving us gifts! Oh, Welcome to Thank you so much! Let the road trip begin. Here Nomis is giving us the sightseeing tour of Karuisawa in Nagano. This mountainous terrain is one of Japan's oldest and most famous winter resort towns and draws visitors year-round with popular sports such as skiing, hiking, golfing, hot spas and natural scenery. It also earned an international reputation for hosting the curling event in the 98 Winter Olympics. It's often described as the Aspen of Japan. That's the first time I've heard you speak Japanese ever. Yeah, oh, yes. I'm fluent, actually. Yeah. Very, very fluent. We're impressed. <laughs> <laughs> we're, impressed. Okay, we're in this Nagano. very. We're in, so I've been saying it wrong. It's Nagano, not Nagano. <laughs> Yankee that I am. <laughs> Such a Yankee. Gaijin. See, so we're gonna have some noodles. Nomis tells us that soba sometimes kills people. 
Yes, yeah, so we'll see. Bit quite often. <laughs> we're, quite we're a little bit concerned, but I think we'll make it through the night. <laughs> Nagano is home to its famous soba or shinshu noodles made from buckwheat. This is a dish served cold and accompanied by this heavenly dipping sauce called tsuyu, which contains grinded walnuts. This is also why it can potentially kill people that have nut allergies. After you finish eating the noodles, you mix the boiled water in which the soba were cooked and the leftover dipping sauce into a soup and drink it. So we just had noodles. Uh, soba noodles, cold ones, which apparently is um, a, is a thing to do here in Nagano. And uh, you dip it in this delicious sauce, and I think Nomas told me it's something nice. It was delicious. And then you got like these crispy um, mm. yellow Beautiful. stuff. Beautiful, look at that. I think it's actually uh, tempura shards of some sort. That's what it looks like. The word shard. <laughs> shards. shards. Uh, and then there was this little tea, which I wasn't very fond no, of. To be honest. Like, I think this is a soba tea, but it, it's, it's not it smells nice. like nuts. It smells. It's very nutty. <laughs> it smells like these nuts. <laughs> Yeah, it smells like weird nuts. I really don't like it. The first night of our road trip, we slept in a smoker's business hotel in Nagano. Who knew those even still existed? We are we are so basically, we right now we're leaving the city, Saku city, and going into the mountain area, Yamanashi. And Yamanashi is where you you have. Mount Fuji. We're not skipping Mount day. Fuji. Yeah. Yamanashi! <laughs> <laughs> Nomas, all gloved up like the pro driver that he is, took us through Yamanashi on our way to our first stop, Aokigahara Forest, which was on the way to Mount Fuji. The area Yamanashi actually means pear mountain in Japanese. This area is known as Japan's fruit kingdom and produces more fruit than any other part of the country. This was our first taste of the Japanese countryside. It looked very lush and green, as you can see. And about a two and a half hour drive later, we arrived at the forest. So this is Aoki Gahara Forest, also known as Suicide Forest, also known as, uh, if I'm not butchering the Japanese language, Jukai which is Sea of Trees. Aokigahara Forest is home to the Ghost of the Dead, which is called Yurei in Japanese mythology. At least since the 60s, unfortunately, this forest has become associated with a lot of suicides and therefore eventually becoming known by the nickname Suicide Forest. The Yamanashi Prefecture has trained people and volunteers to spot troubled visitors in Aokigahara and there are security cameras and prominent messages posted at the entrance to the park. The sign reads, your life is a precious gift from your parents. Please think about your parents, siblings and children. Don't keep it to yourself. Talk about your troubles. Uh, about a thousand years ago when Mount Fuji erupted, um, it covered this whole forest in lava. And because of that dense layer of lava, everything's sort of growing on top of it, including trees, but the trees are unable to penetrate the ground. There's no echo. It's also to do with the, the rock underneath. It absorbs the sound. And because of all the iron in the ground, there's also really bad connection here. So the cell phone reach is really poor. Super cold here, by the way. Like it's supposed to be 19 degrees, but in here in the forest, it's super cold. We Are they the, for ghosts? We at the border of this world. And the next one. The next so it has one. to do with ghosts. And uh, we are right on Spirits. the edge. Oh, wow. We spent about two hours walking in the forest and then decided to drive to Fuji Kawaguchiko to see Mount Fuji from there. And well, this is one shrine to see Mount Fuji from, but she's a little timid today. All right, we're 20 kilometers from Mount Fuji and we drove a long way to see her, <laughs> but she's hiding behind clouds. So we're just gonna wait a little bit and see if it opens up and if we get to see her and uh, yeah, wish us luck. <gasps> there she is! The old lady showed herself. Japan, thank you. Thank you, Japan. You pulled through. <laughs> but we only see the tip. Just a tip. Just a tip. The there she is. See, it's a beautiful mountain. That's what it is. It's just beautiful. The shape of it. It's beautiful. After finally spotting Mount Fuji, we were euphoric as you can imagine. We jetted off to another vantage point that didn't quite work out because clouds had really set in at this point. Also getting there was quite the workout as we had to conquer a total of 398 steps to get there. 
but luckily we had already checked the Mount Fuji box and decided to go to dinner, and very contently so. Cheers. To Mount Fuji. Cheers. That old high. That to the steps as well. 398 steps. Yeah. <laughs> what are you drinking? I think they call this lemon sour, right? Pure gin? Oh, yeah. Lemon yeah. sour. Okay. <laughs> After our lovely dinner, we ran into some issues because we didn't book any hotels during our road trip and everything seemed to be fully booked in the neighborhood and around. Hmm? Oh no, shame. Yeah, he was more like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Tonight? Are you joking? You must be kidding, yeah, yeah. Oh no. no. Shortly thereafter, we found a questionable place, which was advertised as a Korean restaurant, which was of course a bit weird, but we were very tired and a little bit desperate at this point. And a 20 minute drive later, we arrived at the hotel. There goes the influencer. <laughs> so as you can tell nobody was amused at this point i was in a horrible mood and she wasn't happy either uh, the hotel was even quite expensive and walking into the place it also smelled like gas which was concerning well our uh, road trip has taken a turn it's for the, the worst. worst we have arrived in what can only be described as a one-star <laughs> hole <laughs> so uh yeah i'm gonna yeah. say you sad anyway so we pushed these beds together so we got the grand suite <laughs> <laughs> basically but uh should we have offered them this room then we just waltzed in here like from the length. okay home <laughs> push those beds together we're not gonna get into it <laughs> is the breakfast included no seriously not. there's no breakfast it's like let's try and escape <laughs> no it's already got the keys like let's get the f out of here <laughs> anyways <laughs> any final words uh well the bed looks all right and yeah it's just, it looks okay right it's humble. it's humble and it's perfect. It's a Korean hotel. Yeah, well, it now it's official. Yeah, she looked well Korean. Well yeah. Korean. <laughs> the way she spoke as well. No. Yeah, did yeah. You, yeah, I don't I'm know. Not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't even know now. <laughs> no, yeah, she looks well obvious. Korean. I love that. But it's not that bad. But only to show you how thin this mattress actually is, you can actually push it flatter to like not even half a centimeter thick. Look at that. It's so thin, Karin. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> hey there, guys. Thanks for watching another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe below and drop a comment if you can. I would really appreciate it. Ciao. Follow me. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs>